some Harry Potter universe, mostly the originals, but the Fantastic Beast films are fun too. So any excuse we have to play with those effects, we're all over it. So today, let's look at how we turn this into this. Now we're not gonna be talking about how we did the apparating effect that you saw in the beginning, since we did show that before and basically did the exact same way that we taught back in 2011. We have a link for that episode in the notes below if you wanna check that out. But for our spell effect, the first thing to look at here is how we shot it. We looked out on a great overcast day and that wintry overcast sort of look really does help sell the overall Harry Potter vibe, but that really has nothing to do with what we're talking about. I knew we were gonna add things in camera to help sell the effects, specifically wind, which again, we really lucked out on the day that we shot because it happened to be pretty windy already, so I didn't need to do anything extra. If there wasn't that natural wind, we would have used something like leaf blower or fan to get that movement on our actors to help sell the effect in the end. All I can say is sham. And then there was also light on our actors. You can, of course, add color on your talent in post, but nothing is going to sell as well as physical lights on your actor's face, especially when it isn't just a few frames like a muzzle flash. This light stays on for a while, so the audience has plenty of time to feel that artificial vibe in post lighting. So we just grabbed one of our RGB lights and set it to the color that we wanted, like this red, which again, you could do this same thing for super cheap by painting a light bulb with red high heat paint and throw that in a lamp or better yet a cheap clamp light, which we showed how you can do that and make your own DIY light kit in another episode, like for that in the notes as well. But I had the light on a stand pointed away from Josh and on cue, I twisted it toward him. That's it. Then Josh and Emily acted ridiculous for a minute and we were done. Now we're gonna jump into After Effects and once you have your footage in the comp, you're gonna wanna track the tip. Just the tip! Stop! I'm so sorry, I couldn't stop it. Dirty. So you're gonna wanna track the end of the wand, and if you were smart, you put a light at the end of your wand so you can use motion tracker, but with our footage, we're gonna need to track manually frame by frame using a null layer because the background was very similar in color to our wand. So I'm sure Thompson probably wanted to kill me a little bit when he got this footage. Now we're gonna drag and drop the footage of the spell beam. We're using an asset from our new extinction pack, and you can create this yourself using particles, but it's much easier to use pre-made assets like this if you can. So if you wanna check out the pack, link in the notes. But we are using our Harry Potter electric effect called Voldemort. So we'll drop that in and set the layer blending mode to screen and change the scale, rotation, and position if needed to match the shot. Our footage was shot at 1080 and our Voldemort effect is 4K, so we have a lot of detail if we wanna do a closer shot as well. For our shot, we're filming at an angle, so we're gonna make the spell effect a 3D layer and change the rotation to try and match our angle more. Now, depending on the sort of effect you're trying to achieve, you can either link this layer to the track and it'll move with the wand, but this sometimes makes it move unnaturally and it looks a little obvious and definitely like an effect. So for this, what we want is for part of the spell to be attached to the wand, like right here, and the other part to stay still, not influenced by the actor's movement so much. So a better option here and a handy trick is to use the puppet tool. So for this, we're gonna pre-compose our spell layer by selecting layer, pre-compose, move all attributes into new composition, then set the blending mode of the new comp to screen. Then we're gonna select the puppet pin tool at the top of the toolbar here. Here, we're gonna place pins along the spell beam by clicking where you want them, starting with the very beginning of the beam. If the effect goes out of frame like it does here, then it's best to make points around the frame too, otherwise they might get warped. But now go through the drop downs of the puppet pin effect until you find the pin, which is at the beginning of the spell beam. Now we're gonna click the pick whip icon next to the position of that puppet pin point and drag it until your mouse is over the position of the track null. So when you let go, the mouse has now linked that part of the spell beam to the wand and the rest remains still. To show what that's doing a little bit better, here's an example just using a motion track, and then again, the example of that same shot, but this time using the puppet pin tool trick. Next, we add an adjustment layer with multiple copies of the glow effect and set different radiuses and intensities to bloom out the colors of the spell. After that, we use optical flares for the end of the wand by using a light layer linked to the null. Now we wanna make it feel like the spell is affecting the air around it. So on our footage layer, we will draw a simple mask around the spell effect, then grab Video Copilot its heat plugin. This is a great way to add displacement and give some extra energy to an effect. For this type of thing, I used to use turbulent displacement. Turbulent displacement, turbulent displacement. But ever since heat came out, it completely replaced the need for turbulent displacement, turbulent displacement. But in the plugin, we're gonna change the direction, scale, and speed until we like the look that we're getting. Nothing super specific here. We're just toying around until we're happy. But now we're gonna pause there so we can thank our sugar daddy. Yeah! Yeah. Sugar daddy! Yes. Yes! Give me what you got! Show me okay. your- show me okay. your- Okay, no, 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 no! 
Domain .com is all your website needs, including .com and .net mm, domain names. Preach. Oh, I am. Preach it. Oh, I'm gonna. You gonna preach it. Watch me do it. A domain.com is your website needs. It has it .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders. So you can start taking the first step. Take the first step and create an identity online. They're affordable. They're reliable. And they have the tools that you need to build a website to start sharing your ideas with the world on a professional website. Don't shout me down. Don't shout me down. No domain extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com or .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, let me tell you how to do it. Domain.com has over 300 domain name extensions to fit your need from .com to .net. And they are giving you 15% off, bless God, they're giving you 15% off. They're already affordable, and they're making it more so. When you get a domain name, when you get a web hosting, and when you get an email, just use that coupon code from right at domain.com checkout. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Yeah! Yeah, see, I like, right? Yeah, that was pretty good. Thanks, man. Logo. Jumping right back in. Uh, Since the effect. Uh, why are you still dressed up? I mean, I like it. And I already did my hair. Yeah, but. It'd take too really long to like redo. But I think I kind of look nice. I mean, you do kind of look nice. Thank you. Since the effect is bright, the last thing that we did to finish off the effect was to use one of these lens textures. And since Christmas is right around the corner, we have a gift for you. You can download these eight lens textures for free right now. Just go to the link in the notes below. These are great to give that realistic touch and make an effect feel like it was actually filmed by the camera. I mean, you could at least put the book down. I mean, it just, it like completes, it completes it's the whole weird. thing. No, it's weird. It's not weird. It's not weird. It's a little weird. It's not weird. To use them, we place it above all the other layers and then set the blending mode to screen. You can tweak it with effects and change the opacity till it looks right to you. And just, you know, slap some spank on it. What? Just, you spank it. I cannot take you seriously. You can't say things like spank dress like that. <laughs> For our scene, we wanted it to flicker, so we used a wiggle nope, expression. we are not gonna say wiggle. So we used a wiggle expression on the layer's opacity. Hold the Alt key and click on the opacity stopwatch, then type in the expression wiggle 80, uh, 40, which is the exact amount of wiggle I like to have. I don't, you can't, I don't like you saying It's wiggle. like the exact amount of wiggle. This gives the layer a nice animated flicker, which works perfect for what we're looking for. For the wide shot, we did the same thing. We tracked both wands by hand, used the puppet pin tool on both separate spell effects, used optical flares, heat, glows, and magic bullet to add a slight cinematic flare. Only this time, we changed the color of Josh's spell to red. For this shot, we also had to show the impact of the two spells hitting each other like you've seen in the Harry Potter films. It looks like you're going to prison for embezzlement. Or, yeah, probably, yeah. For this, we used both Magic Impact and Energy Impact, again, from our Extinction Pack. Then, we will adjust the scale and position on the effects until they are in the center of both spell beams. And for this, we didn't need to track anything because we're locked down and the impacts do remain in one place. Then, we're going to tweak the color and brightness of the Energy Impact to match with the other effects more. Then, we use Shockwave Muzzle Front and Vortex Muzzle Front from the Muzzle Flashes in the Extinction Pack to act as a quick shockwave from the spell. We placed them over the impact and altered the color and brightness again until everything worked together. Then to help everything blend well together, we created an adjustment layer above the footage and colored one green on the left, one red on the right, and in the center we boosted the brightness. Then masked and feathered all of these sections to the ground to resemble light fall off from the spells. And finally we added some camera shake to help increase the feel of the shockwave and impact, and we used the camera shake effect which comes as part of the Red Giant universe, but you can do the same thing with keyframes or the wiggle expression right inside of your software. The camera Shake plugin just makes it easier and faster. But finally, and actually finally, we added our lens texture effect that we showed before, and we have our effect. Which, with some adjustments, you can see here that there's a lot of different looks that you can get with the same process. Now for the title, we used Element 3D for the text and multiple layers of different effects from Extinction for magical energy, which of course was inspired by the Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. We may do a tutorial for the title in the future if you guys want, so let us know in the comments. But that's it for today, and as a heads up, there's gonna be no episode on January 3rd or January 7th. We're taking a little time off soon, so we're not gonna have episodes on those days, but it's just the two days, so, you know, success. But that's it, and I'll see you guys next time when I get a pig's tail for eating his cake. Off to do your taxes? Yeah.
What?